You've got a brand new LP out now, 2 AM Vibes. What was the inspiration or themes that you explore on this? Well, the whole concept is generally when I produced for the longest time for about 10 years while making music, I, the sweet spot time for me is about 2 AM when the magic, the vibe happens, the whole world is asleep. And I just feel like I'm not bothering anyone. So I kind of get really creative. And I think um, I just decided to call it that because that's when the hits are being made. <laughs> Well, are you fully producing this album yourself or did you work with someone else to create the LP? Well, I would say 85% my productions. So, you know, obviously I've got a song or two that I kind of co-wrote co -wrote before the pandemic, but generally it was done during the pandemic here in the studio. There's some beautiful songs on the LP. What are some of your personal favorites that really stand out and hold a special spot in your heart? Well, just the, the fact that you say that you like some of the songs means the world to me. It means everything because I put my heart and soul into this project. Um, I would say one of my favorite. It's hard to choose like a like your favorite kid. Child. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Before This Life Is Up. So the current focus record on the album, that one is special to me. Just I love the sax vibe. It reminds me of summer. It, it just it feels so Miami. Like it, it feels like hopeful. Right. It's so optimistic. Absolutely. Another one. I would say I really love Bloodline. Me and Chrissy Spratt. Um, Bloodline is beautiful. What else do I love? Um, Life's so beautiful as well. There's so many. I can't. I can't just pick and choose like that. You can't. Do Very that optimistic that. album. <laughs> yeah. What do you like? That's the question. I love Bloodlines. That one just hits me very much. <laughs> so when I said that, you were like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, I'm feeling it. <laughs> oh sweet. I love that one. I really love that one. It's it's. Does it feel optimistic to you? Because for me, it feels dark. Like for me, it's a darker song. But but what's interesting for Chrissy, I had a talk with her the other day. For her, she sees colors and happy. I'm like, no, because we think of the video concept. And I'm like, no, I see like dark reds and like smoky. And it's like, I don't know, I feel it. What, what's your sense from that? I'm yeah, I was going to say the darker aspects conjured up because you're talking about blood and lines and you're talking right. about like the dna and the connection and the flowing in your veins exactly that's what i thought too i think so mine is spot on good <laughs> <laughs> were there any particular tracks that challenged you the most or maybe gave you a little bit more time to pause on the production or what i want musically instrumentally here and there yeah, I mean, there were there were maybe one or two that took a little bit of time. Um, so Fiji, Fiji was a little bit of a tough one. I wasn't even going to put that on the album, but people loved it so much. And, and, and it was so well written, too. Just the lyrically was clever and whatnot. I wrote it with a couple of other people, you know, two other uh, writers. And it's just they're they're phenomenal. You know, they're just great poets as well. So we kind of collaborated on that one. And I wasn't sure because it was a different style that I'm going for right now, but it just works at the, you know, it depends where you place a song, right? It, it's, it's a journey. You can't have every song like, you know, not too late, you know, get away. And you can't just have all EDM There's records. Flow. Yeah. You got to let it flow. And, and that's where it naturally went. But I think that was one of them. It wasn't hard to produce and put together. It was just harder for me to decide if I wanted it on this body of work. What is your songwriting process? Do you need music before you can come up with lyrics? Do you need a beat right. and then everything comes? The way it starts generally, okay, is it starts off with the production. So I, I, I start off with the keys. I come up with an idea for at least a chord pattern. And then I bring in the hi-hat, then the kick, the snare. So it, it just grows from music to drum rhythm. And then from the rhythmic section, once that's all put together, then I come up with a melody. And once I have the melody, then I start writing the lyrics towards that melody and whatever emotion I'm feeling from that melody. There are some insane collaborations on this LP. Yeah. How did you connect with all the people that you work with on this LP? And do you have a dream artist you'd love to work with one day? Right. You know what? Cardinal Official is, he's a gem. That guy has been a good friend of mine for, for, for a really long time. And I don't know if you know this, but he's, he, he used to, you know, he was, his song is called Dangerous, you know, his big record with Akon. And now he's the head of a r or the, sorry, the, the vice president of a r at Universal Music Canada. So he wow. just, this was only like three days ago. 
So he got the, the promotion. And I think that's huge. He's such a talented visionary in this industry. And he's, in my opinion, very underrated, but, he, but it's proving himself now. I mean, obviously he's not underrated at all. He's got 5 million monthly listeners on Spotify. I mean, he's massive. So just for him to support me every single time and to jump on my records, I mean, this, this is the fourth or fifth song we've done together. So okay. I, I don't know what it is. He believes in me, I guess. He's a friend, he, you know, but he doesn't expect anything. He just, you know, I, I'm really indebted to him for that because he's, he's a huge name and he's always willing to collaborate with me without question. So he must be seeing something in me. Yeah, know, right. So I'm very, very blessed with his collabo. The other ones, Chrissy Spratt, the story behind her is phenomenal because our, our dads are friends since they were kids in Lebanon. Like, I couldn't believe it. And she's from Ottawa in Canada and I'm, <laughs> I'm from Toronto. Oh, no, so, right. so, and we met like four years ago at, at the backstage at one of my shows. And she was there. She was, I, I guess she was opening up for me or something. So it was cool. So I, I was speaking to my dad about that. I'm like, there's this girl, Chrissy Spratt. She's, she's really dope. He's like, Spratt? I'm like, yeah, so. And he's like, what about her dad? Her dad's this. I'm like, dad, come on. What, you're going to remember some? It, it could be many Spratts. He's like, no, there's not a lot. I'm like, cool. And then we found out that her dad and my dad were best friends as kids in Beirut. Crazy. That's why we called the song Bloodline, too. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Is there someone you'd love to work with then as a dream collaboration in the future? Right. I would say, you know, Akon and I have always, I've toured with him at least eight times, eight tours we've done together. But we've, and we've always talked about a collabo. I don't know why we've never done it. You know, sometimes these things are organic and you can't force them, you know, especially Absolutely. with music. You just got, it's got to be the right song, right moment. That's kind of how it works for everything, every collabo that I do. Um, so I would say Akon, um, anyone from, from the latest, you know who I really love? Billie Eilish, so dope. She's so good. That would be sick, wouldn't it? Like, because we're so different, our styles, there could be some magic there, I feel. <laughs> so I'm putting it out there. Billie, <laughs> call me, let's go. <laughs> the Toronto music scene is just blowing up these days. What advice would you give for artists who are upcoming in Toronto area? I say, you know what, lately I've been thinking just really don't settle. Don't settle for not, you know, just be, put, put all your, like, focus on greatness, man. Cause that's all that matters. Like, even if you're, let's say you're working with another person and, and you really feel something strongly in your heart and you, and, and you believe that it'll higher the quality of your work. Don't settle just to be a nice guy you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. and i'm not saying be mean with people but just really inspire them to change it to your vision because at the end of the story my project that album you know the 2 a.m vibes i'm really proud of it and i could stand behind it because every vocal every mix every nook and cranny on that production on that on that album was was stamped by me and i'm proud of it so that goes a long way that goes a long way. So that's one advice I would give people. The album, well, the LP is out today. How do you plan on celebrating? Are you going to be doing any live streams? <laughs> Man, honestly, I'm, I've been doing interviews nonstop. I literally slept last night on the floor in my studio. I couldn't even, my eyes couldn't stay open anymore. It's, it's really exhausting because it's amazing. I mean, I'm blessed to do it. I'm not even, you know, but it's hard when you work a lot and there's no play because of the pandemic. You know, we were so used to generally working so hard and then we can go to the club or we can go have, have an ice cream with a friend. And it's really tough. It's really tough. So I'm not playing as much, but I'm working the same amount of hours, right? In terms right. of my work ethic. So that's a little, it's, 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 it's tough. Yeah. So you don't have any live streaming though events coming up that you're thinking of performing a little bit. That way you can Correct. feel like you're back on stage. I know, you know what? And, my, my bad not to, to address that question. It, it's a little tougher with, with live streams too. It's not even as much fun, man. You're really just performing to your phone. People got to remember that. It's not like there's a bunch of people here. It's to the, the little phone. So that's hard to be inspired by that. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, hopefully once the summer opens up and we can at least do a drive-in concert or something, I'd love to do that. And I think people would want to see me live rather than just through a screen. You know what I mean? I just think it's more fun. What do you miss most then about being on stage and performing for concerts? Wow, just the vibe of the people, you know, seeing the smiles, seeing, you know, just everyone letting loose, you know, it seems like such a foreign thing now, 
you know, that Absolutely. people can be together and have fun and put their, and just, I don't know, be human, you know, we're really, really losing ourselves. And, and believe me, I'm no conspiracy theorist. I'm no like anti-masker, anti-vaxxer. I, I, I just want the world to get back to normalcy. So whatever we got to do, let's just freaking do it quick. What would you like to say then to everyone who are fans and supporters of you and are ready to check out this new LP? I want them to listen to the whole thing from top to bottom. I really, you know, in a day and age where a lot of people are getting bombarded by singles, by different artists, I know they're being pulled this way, that way. Just take a second. I know we have time. We have a little bit of time, right? Because everything kind of slowed down, right? We, that's all we, we got, got time. Bro. We got time. So I say, please listen through it. There's a lot of interesting messages in there. It's a very hopeful, it's, you know, someone mentioned this. They said it was my darkest album. Um, you know, I get it. I could see that. But at the same time, it's, it's still hopeful and optimistic and still reminds you of the summer and somewhat optimistic. So I say, listen to it and get in that summer spirit.